with intra-auditory processing evaluations, we test what the brain does with what the ear hears. So when the peripheral hearing is normal, we evaluate what the brain interprets the sound to be as it's coming in. Um, many of the children that we see for this testing are having academic difficulties. And by doing this test, we can determine whether the problems they're having are due to a breakdown in their auditory system in understanding what they're hearing. The difference between auditory processing disorder and a hearing loss is that in a hearing loss, there is a problem with the peripheral system. The peripheral hearing system includes the outer, middle, and inner ear up to the auditory nerve. In central auditory processing disorder, the problem occurs at a higher level from the brainstem on up to the brain where sound and speech are processed. So when a child comes in for central auditory processing evaluation, the first thing that we do is a basic hearing test to make sure that the peripheral hearing is normal. We take a look in the ears with an otoscope, which is a light which most kids are used to having done at their pediatrician's office. We do a tympanogram, which is a pressure test to make sure the eardrums are moving normally. And then we do um, some speech testing and we do some tone testing. So the child will say words back when they hear words spoken by the audiologist. And then they'll either raise their hand or push a button when they hear the beeps. Once that test is completed and we know that the peripheral hearing is normal, we can move on to the central auditory processing evaluation. The central auditory processing evaluation portion involves the child listening to pre-recorded speech that has been changed. So the child might hear some words that are presented in background noise. They hear some words that have been altered. They hear um, sometimes two words at the same time, one in the right ear, one in the left ear, and they would have to focus on both words and repeat them both back. They also will hear words in both ears at the same time where they have to ignore one ear and just pay attention to the other ear. All of these different tasks test various portions of the auditory processing system and all this information gives us a clue as to how the child is processing the incoming sound. In preparation for the auditory processing evaluation, the child should be well rested. Get a good night's sleep the night before so they are ready to perform the next morning. If the child takes any medications on a daily basis, such as medication for attention deficit disorder, it's important that they take that prior to testing so they're able to focus on the test. Many times when kids come in for the evaluation, they're very nervous, and I like to stress to them that it's a great test because they can't get anything wrong. All I do is simply write down what they're able to hear, and they get everything right because that's exactly what they hear. Following the auditory processing evaluation, the audiologist will discuss the results with the parent. The audiologist will look over the data later and write a report which will go to the pediatrician, the referring physician, and also to the parent. The parent can then take the report to the school to use for the child's IEP or for classroom accommodations. It's important to have a multifactored evaluation when dealing with identifying central auditory processing evaluation. Because other disorders can look like central auditory processing evaluation, it's important to rule out things like attention deficit disorder, cognitive delay, or severe language disorder. All these things can look very similar, and in fact, they can also coincide. So it's important to have all these evaluations done to determine what the focus should be for therapies.